Alright, thanks for watching and today we would like to calculate the determinant of a van der Mond matrix. But before that, just a little nice story. Um, <laughs> so there's another video where I calculate the determinant of a van der Mond matrix using a cool way, using I think something like the fundamental theorem of algebra. And um, I posted this video and I told my students watch it. Except I thought that video would be the standard way of using row reduction. I completely forgot that it was this awesome way. And then my poor linear algebra students were so scared. They were like, do we need to know this? Well, that video, no. But let me show you sort of the way I expect you to not solve this. So, this is the van der Mond matrix. Really cute. It has a very cute determinant. And the thing you have to understand is, well, using Bomberman or cofactor expansion is a bad idea. So let's look for a different way to solve this. And here what's nice is we can actually use row reduction. And just another remark before I actually do it. Um, this way I'm doing now doesn't really help you to know how to prove it. So it sort of just works for this matrix or any other matrix. But in another video, I'll give you a more recursive way of doing it so you can see how to prove the general case. So here, just for fun. And as I said, for this, it's good to use row reduction. So let's try to get rid of all those ones. So let's subtract the first row from the second row and from the third row and from the fourth row, etc., etc. So do minus one, minus one, and minus one. Then what do we get? Well, the first row is still one x, x squared, x cubed. And the other ones are, so zero, y minus x, y squared minus x squared, y cubed minus x cubed, and same thing for z, so z minus x, z squared minus x squared, z cubed minus x cubed, and 0, t minus x, t squared minus x squared, t cubed minus x cubed. Now, this looks like a lost cause, but the beautiful thing is every row will have a factor in common because, um, let me write this, so we have 1, x, x squared, x cubed, and well, we have 0, y minus x, y squared minus x squared, if you remember your algebra, it's y minus x times y plus x, and then y cubed minus x cubed, turns out this can also be factored, simply as, y minus x, y minus x, and let's say, uh, I don't know, y squared plus xy plus x squared. So it's almost like, you know, y squared plus 2xy plus x squared, but just with this one factor. And then we have 0, y minus x, oh, sorry, same thing with z, z minus x, z minus x, times z plus x, and then z minus x, and z squared plus xz plus x squared. There's a student of mine, he likes to say xd, well, not xd here, xz, and then 0, t minus x, t minus x times t plus x, and then t minus x, like t rex, t squared plus xt plus x squared. And again, all this is nice because there's this extra factor everywhere here. Let's see, if I have my green pen. So, oh, well, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> Let me see, I have some other ones. Uh, there you go. Very good. So y minus x, y minus x, y minus x, z minus x, z minus x, z minus x, t minus x, t minus x, t minus x. 
which means that, again, all those factors come out. So let me do it here, because I don't know how far I can go with the whiteboard so you can still see. Then we get, again, do all those factors come out? So y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, and then the determinant of 1, 0, 0, 0, x, and then 1, 1, 1, and then x squared, y plus x, z plus x, t plus x, and x cubed, Again, x squared plus xy plus y squared, x squared plus xz plus z squared, and x squared plus xt plus t squared. I just interchange the two. And the nice thing is this looks van der Monde-ish, well, sort of, right? Because we still have this one, 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 and the question is, well, now maybe we can, uh, Expand it out if you'd like. So if you just expand along the first column, notice it's 1 times the determinant of this plus 0, 0, 0, which doesn't matter. And then we really get y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, and the determinant of 1, y plus x, x squared plus xy plus y squared, 1, z plus x, x squared plus xz plus z squared, and 1, t plus x, x squared plus xt plus t squared. Now, uh, this is, as I said, this is not the best proof because it doesn't tell you how to do it in general, but uh, this one, it looks messy, but we can still evaluate it using row reduction. So let's subtract the first row from the second row and the first row from the third row. And then we get this formula. I don't know why I'm looking at my notes. I'm not using them. <laughs> um, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x. And then we still have one y plus x, and then x squared plus xy plus z, uh, y squared. And then let's see, 1 minus 1, which is 0. Now, z plus x minus y plus x, the x's cancel out, and we get z minus y. That's already very good. Here, x squared minus x squared, which is 0, xz minus xy, which if you'd like, it's, yeah, let's just do uh, x times z minus y, and z squared minus y squared, which is z minus y times z plus y, and the same thing with t, so, you know, t plus x minus y plus x, so t minus y, and then I think uh, x times t minus y, and then t minus y times t plus y. And notice the nice thing is, well, here there's a common factor of z minus y, and there's a common factor of t minus y, so we get a nice simplification. So we still have uh, y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, determinant of, let's see, 1, 0, 0, y plus x, x squared plus xy plus y squared, why doesn't he already expand it out, man? But it's okay. I like a nice simplification at the end. So z minus y times, I guess, x plus z plus y. So a for one, x plus y plus z. And then t minus y. And then t minus y. x plus y plus t. 
And as I already alluded to, um, there is this common factor here, z minus y and t minus y, and we get y minus x, z minus x, t minus x, z minus y, t minus y, and then determinant of 1, y plus x, x squared plus xy plus y squared, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then uh, x plus y plus z, x plus y plus t. Okay, and now again we can expand it out. Let's expand it along the first column. So we will get just 1 times the determinant of this plus 0 plus 0. So essentially what we're left with is uh, y minus x z minus x, t minus x, z minus y, t minus y, times this factor, x plus y plus t, times 1, minus 1 times x plus y plus z. So minus x minus y minus z. And then the x's cancel out, the y's cancel out, and what you're left with then is simply, let's see where I can write, where can I write it? Maybe here. You're then left with y minus x, z minus x, t minus x. I guess, how about let do that, t minus x, and then, uh, yeah, z minus y, t minus y. And uh, t minus z. And let me see how can you think of this. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So essentially, so this is the van der Waal matrix determinant, and the way to think about this is as follows. So first of all, well, you have four variables, right? X, Y, Z, T. You take x, and then for all the other variables, you subtract x. So y minus x, z minus x, t minus x. And then you forget about x. Then you do y. You fix y, and then for all the other variables, you subtract y. So z minus y and t minus y. And lastly, you fix z. And then you just subtract z from all the other variables, which is just t, so t minus z, and then you're done. So this is a way of thinking of the van der Waal determinant. Of course, in this example, you know, it's not clear how to do it in general, but as I said, in another video, I'll do the general case. So I hope you like this, and if you want to see more math and more linear algebra, please click like and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.